Well, good morning to you. We have a great one here for you today. You know, this is just the beginning of a great series. Yesterday, we talked about how to supercharge your job search, how to really take control of it and uh, do much more than just sit on the internet looking at job postings. Today, we're going to turn that self-recruiter lens toward the resume itself. This resume that we have such a historical idea of what's well, supposed to look like this, it's supposed to look like that, um, supposed to be effective. The resume's job is to open the door for you. Resume's job is to create that interest. Oh, get them in here. Get them on the phone. Let's get them on a Zoom. I, I have to speak with them. I have to, I have to get a sense of them. That's to create the excitement about you. So we have a lot to think about in, in reinventing a resume to be effective. Most resumes don't work because we now live in a world where no one will read. You know, I have to say that at the New York Public Library quite often. And I keep waiting for the lightning to hit, but it doesn't hit. But that's that portends some awful things for our future as a country. But um, if I understand they don't read, well, then why would I put a sentence on a resume? We're going to give you all those secrets to suddenly change the way your resume looks, the way it functions. But really, in all of that shift beyond the visual, it's also how to capture the essence and value of your career in just a very simple telling, not to tell the whole story, summary, uh, biography of everything I've ever done. No, just to begin to create that interest. So let's, let's well, a great question to start with. <laughs> is it working? You know how you know when your resume is working? Because it delivers the interviews you know you're qualified for. If it's not delivering the interviews for you, something's wrong with the resume. Let's, let's change that. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a, a full series. Uh, yesterday was... Uh, Supercharging your job search, really how to organize and manage it properly. Today is resume renovation, all the secrets toward the resume. Tomorrow is LinkedIn and really how to take what we'll create today, which is the essence and value of the career and how to expand that into a three-dimensional sales brochure, all about you that naturally drives that reader on LinkedIn to the singular conclusion. My gosh, if I hire or buy or, or, or work with this person on whatever project I'm working on, best business decision I'll make today. Uh, we're going to follow that up on Thursday with really part two to LinkedIn called Career Evolution. It is preparing for your career's next leap with social media marketing. Or really, now that I have a great LinkedIn profile, what do I do with it? It's how to build and manage very simply a social media campaign for yourself that you can manage in just two minutes a day to help manage your career branding and keep it on the forefront of people's minds. Friday, we're going to end out this week with interview intervention, all the secrets to be a standout during the interview process. And then we're going to have a very special recap on Monday. Yes, Halloween, <laughs> where we're going to do a very special live Q&A, Ask Self Recruiter. So uh, get your questions answered. Send them in to ask at selfrecruiter.com. That's ask at selfrecruiter.com. And all the best ones are always included. So as we move ahead to today, you know, resume tends to be that that first point of notice about us. You know, when I when I named this uh, lecture, because I know a lot of people talk about this subject, I really thought about the challenge. And, and it's not a little bit of cosmetic work. Oh, let's do a little typography here, a little adjustment there. Yes, all those things are included as well. But it's more than that. It's not as simple as going into a room and putting up a little wallpaper, a little fresh paint, only oh, maybe, maybe a fresh window treatment over there. No, no, this is bringing in the sledgehammers. Let's break down the walls down to the studs. We have to rethink, reimagine the storytelling and what's possible. So that's the challenge we're in for, resume renovation. Let's get going. Let's talk about a few issues that involve resumes. And, and um, you know, most of it is 90-95% is of the resumes in the stack, giant stack for every decent job. 90-95% of those resumes not being right for this job. And what happens after a few dozen, few hundred, it's like snow blindness, resume blindness. I, 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 I can't tell any of these books apart. Um, that, that becomes the problem. And, and most of it is that even if you're right for the job, you're mixed in with these 90, 95% that are not right for the job. But why are they here? They're here very simply because they see this job, which is a great job. And their job somehow surrounds or supports this. They go, oh. If they need one of those, when they see me, if they have a need, they want to hire me. And that clogs the system for every job. So uh, compounding that even further is, is who, who's filtering all those resumes that aren't quite right. 
the HR department. There's nothing wrong with the HR department, and they're great at hiring HR individuals and handling many and many other things. But for the rest of the organization, they simply facilitate the hiring process. So to me, having someone that's really not the right one to, um, they don't have the background to evaluate which one's the right one here necessarily. Um, gosh, why do I want to throw myself into that mix of being judged by the wrong person? So lots of issues to talk about. If we're going to get to the right solution for resume and of course where that resume maybe should go, ultimately we have to work on both the story itself and the format. We cannot simply do one or the other. Apologies while I have to check to see if that was urgent. Someone seemed to be calling me right in the middle. <laughs> um, but we also have to work on the format. So format itself won't solve it. Story itself won't solve it. It has to be a combination of both of these things. And that means a paradigm shift in, in the way you've told the story in the past. You're, you've told your story a certain way for so long, you've become emotionally attached to telling it a certain way. And oh, I love to tell the story that way. Yeah, don't I too? <laughs> don't we all? But we have to evolve that. that. Uh, so we're going we're to have to think about how we've told it in the past and get away from or break the format of storytelling in the past, along with the format of characters on the page. Um, but we're also going to have to handle new issues. If, you, if you're if you making a change now and you haven't made a change since the start of the pandemic, um, a lot of organizations are still in flux. How will things go? So they really do want to know, even if they're in the office, they want to know if you'd be effective remotely. So you need to make sure that your background communicates that. And if you haven't worked remotely uh, previously, you may have to go back to all the things you have done, or maybe in addition to working remotely during the pandemic, you may want to go back to the other things that you've done in the past and go, well, how else can I demonstrate value at a distance? And I think you can see a little bit of examples here, even down to a, a training or leading or running meetings or conference calls or webinars, all of those kinds of things also present value at a distance as does today's session, <laughs> if I were trying to convey that. Paradigm shift, well, it just means we're going to have to go through fundamental change, not just a little wallpaper, not a little touch-up paint. Let's break it down and, and think of a totally different existence. How does that worm become the butterfly? If you've not seen me before, John Krant, author, career coach, and speaker, resume LinkedIn guru as well. So if your career branding is really suffering or, or your career is suffering being held back or not being offered those those opportunities that that really should come your way. Um, it's a storytelling problem. Most of the time we get stuck in a pattern of telling the story a certain way across our materials. And while this entire series is to help you fix those issues, um, you may want someone to even help you take it to a level you can't get to on your own. Um, very intuitive in storytelling and and really sifting filtering and synthesizing story into uh, excellent career positioning. If you need help, check out my self recruiter website, check under the services tab, I'd be happy to work with you. By the way, if you need to talk before you know which package is right for you, send me a quick email. We'll set up a time to chat. A few things that will help you, uh, and you can get this right at the New York Public Library, by the way, also Amazon over my website as well. Self recruiter book will help you. It is a great roadmap, essentially, of job search, what to do with the resume, what to do with the outreach, what to do with my LinkedIn. What, oh my gosh, what when I get the wrong offer? That's what they're offering me? What do I do then? All of that is in there. It's all the secrets from all my time on the desk as a recruiter. It will really help you a lot. Um, you can take a look at that on your own. Some other written things that will help you over on my LinkedIn profile. You can click on my articles, get to piggybacking on today, how your resume does not become resume roadkill. Very, very <laughs> important. Uh, five keys to supercharging your job search and many, many other things, how to avoid the biggest mistake in job search. That's time mismanagement. Only resource you have. You have to think about that. Uh, now, even, even though I'm about to do this lecture tomorrow, I think yesterday I mentioned it was today. It's actually tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, there's a special version of my LinkedIn lecture, which you may want to work with even after you see tomorrow's live lecture. It's one where you can make the slides large or me large. You can use it really as a start and stop tutorial while you work on improving your own LinkedIn, really turning it into a sales brochure. That'll help you. That's right on my self recruiter website, halfway down the page. It's totally free. Uh, self recruiter in general, let's go to the umbrella. This covers the entire lecture series. You know, what does it mean? It means someone that's ready to take control. Someone that is going to 
understand that not only do you have to be the individual that's going after that job, oh, I want that job, but you also have to be the the uh, stage manager, the the product manager of how you present yourself. You have to be the strategist. Uh, sometimes you have to be the cheerleader. You got to pick yourself up on those bootstraps and dust yourself off to get ready to go do it all over again. Our job is to get out there and manage the entire process for ourselves. And that means we have to become a self-recruiter. This person that's looking after one great individual ourselves. Bulk of that means we're going to begin to network in a very different way. That's the LinkedIn lecture, so tune in tomorrow. But it also means keeping one eye on that toughest competitor imaginable. <laughs> those four, five, six people that would scare you out of going after that job, <laughs> those people, <laughs> you can beat those people very, very easily. Not necessarily by clicking and sending, but you can beat them very, very easily whispering into the ear of the manager with direct outreach, which I teach right in the LinkedIn lecture. So do tune in for that. We have to get out of this rut of, of, of following directions, even though I'm giving you directions here. Well, I'm really giving you advice, directed advice. But but uh, I think you need to uh, look at every direction that you see, like must send Word document. <laughs> I'd never send a Word document ever. It's a PDF. Always, never, ever must send a Word document. You cannot control how the resume looks. We'll get to that a little bit later. Doesn't mean I don't create the resumes in Word. Of course I do. But uh, understand when not to follow directions. Must send compensation requirements. Really? Really? I must tell you how little to pay me because that's really what the question is. How little can I pay you? Uh, I, don't, I don't really feel compelled to answer that question. So I want you to understand that you need to begin to question and answer only the questions or take part in only the process parts that make sense to you. Otherwise, there's ways around it. I could simply step over the fence, get out of the rut. Um, but, it, but it says must apply online. Really? <laughs> you know, years on a desk as, re as a recruiter, we're always looking for leads. Where's, where's something I can chase down and maybe get, get to before another recruiter gets to? Uh, and, and one of those is when a company posts jobs. It's like that means there's an open job. And if I could present superstars to them tomorrow, boy, that's a lot faster for them than waiting six to eight weeks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, but my gosh, that's a, that's, that's a lot to break through. I want you to think about that's really your job in job search is to break through and think about all the things that leave you unhappy and angry and powerless and go, that's just a lack of control. Let's take back control. Let me get over that piece, let go of it emotionally and figure out well, how do I get the control back? So today we'll teach you how to use the unusual, uh, uh, as we get to the next slide here, <laughs> the unusual, unconventional, unexpected things um, that really come along, how you can use those uh, both in storytelling and presentation to suddenly be a standout, to change the lighting, change the focus, to be persuasive all across your resume. Now, before we show you all the secrets to the resume, why does the resume still matter? Aren't we in a digital world? Isn't it really LinkedIn? Well, <laughs> yes, uh, but it's also the resume. The resume still matters because it does tend to be that first point of contact, that first notice of you. Not necessarily, they could, they could have noticed you on LinkedIn if you had a very fine profile, which you certainly should. But, hmm, resume still matters because we get this giant stack. They, they compare us to others. So we have to go... Uh, this is this is part of the whole process. This is part of the equation. It's really the first part of the equation where you can begin to take control of the discussion of you by how you present yourself. But if you're really going to solve the problem, you have to understand the problem. And that means we've got to really go by the numbers. So this comes from also being a hiring manager in industry for many years, hiring and firing many people long before I was a recruiter, thought what I knew I was doing, but of course didn't know anything more than anybody else. I, I was you know, a little valuation and gut feeling. Gosh, who seems right? But by the numbers, once I got to be a recruiter and really looked at the detail, boy, it's it's staggering. So there's a thousand to two thousand resumes being sent in for any decent job. Your resume is mixed in here. That is the first challenge your resume has to think about. When you think storytelling, when you think format, think thousand to two thousand resumes. How do I break that barrier? So who can read a thousand to two thousand? Resumes, a, a thousand emails, a, a thousand cover letters, you know, because people tend to send all that stuff um, and do all their normal work. I, I don't really know anybody that can do all that and do all their normal work. So, so, uh, but that's not actually accurate. 
because if you're sending off to someone that's that's their titles recruiter, I don't care if that's internal recruiter, external recruiter, it doesn't really matter. They tend to work on 10 open jobs at the same time. So it's really who can read 10,000 emails, 10,000 resumes and 10,000 cover letters. And that's only if there's only a thousand in each stack and not 2000 in each stack, you get the idea what you're imagining is not possible. That's why things like the applicant tracking system tag in your ear, like a little animal in the forest. Um, that's why those things come into play because it's just so much volume. Gosh, it sounds like the lottery, <laughs> stopping at the bodega to buy a lottery ticket. Now, I did stop there last week when it got to almost a half a billion dollars. I couldn't resist it. I don't play very often, but but if you're not in it, you can't win it. I didn't win it, so here I am. But I, I'd be here anyway because this is what I meant to do. But I don't plan my financial future because I stopped at the bodega to get the lottery ticket. I'm not going to plan my future career based on going into this system being chewed up through tens of thousands of, of messaging analysis pieces for some computer to spit out my resume to someone who's not actually qualified to review my background <laughs> because they're not from my field, unless you want to work for the HR department. So we have a lot of challenges here. Your, your traditional old fashioned resume doesn't work. You know, when I'm creating a resume for my clients, there is not a single sentence on the resume. Why would I put a sentence on a resume in a world where no one reads any longer? It doesn't even make sense. You have to distill down to concept communications that can be visually imprinted very quickly. And then you have to pay a lot of attention to formatting. You've got seconds to capture. Glance down the page. They better get tingles on the back of their neck about you. Now, a mistake people will make, and I swear we're going right into detail. We'll show you real resumes, examples, everything else. But mistake people make along the way is everything you see around this little orange character all those other folks that are trying to be cookie cutter perfect cookie cutter perfect i want to be cookie cutter perfect no oh, i'm almost there i'm almost there right i just get in line i'm cookie cutter perfect that's great uh, that's great i'll take number three now, number three number three i'm going to pay you less no you don't want less okay doesn't matter i'll take number two i'll take number five i think we see the problem here right if you're just trying to be cookie cutter perfect uh you're getting less money because if you don't want less money, I'll just take the one next to you or the next to you or the next to you or the next 10th in line. It doesn't really matter to me. Interchangeable. So you have to, yes, be cookie cutter perfect, but you also have to somehow be different, exceptional, special, and be able to step out of line. That's where you can command a different set of responsibilities or a different structure or, or a different compensation package. I don't want to leave you with the impression that you're going to work for two hours, have your new resume, and you're ready to go. No, you're going to work for a couple hours and maybe have your first iteration of your new resume, but you very likely need four, five, six iterations or more of your resume to get to the right version. Don't stop too early. We'll take you through the whole process that will help you. Small little changes change everything in perception, and that's the opportunity that sits in front of you. So let's get down to the story because the story is the first part, the format is the second part. You have to change your story in a way that is still absolutely letter true, and yet, grew up Catholic, so I know all about sin. There is no sin of omission here, only sin of commission. So I can leave out any part of the story I'd like to leave out, as long as every single piece of the story I leave in is absolutely letter true. So to begin this process, you have to do really what I do with my clients. And what I do with my clients, if I'm reinventing their resume or LinkedIn profile or setting their career branding in a new direction, is we sit down for a deep dive into inventory interview. This is a deep dive interview where it really is kind of an interrogation. We're looking under the rock, under the bed, in the closet. We're looking everywhere for pieces of story that you've let slip away or, or flicked away or oh, get rid of that old piece of story. I can't even believe that was still hanging around because you have emotional attachment or baggage with that piece. Um, but sometimes that old piece is a huge, huge sell piece. I had... Chief communication officer I was working with a few years back, reinventing their their story and, you know, late 40s at the time. And uh, I'm going through the whole background and, and you know, absorb all of their whole history. And I, I create their initial resume, just like you do. It's an initial version and then we were refine from there. And and uh, oh, I could tell they liked it. I could tell they liked it. But the, oh, there was a little bit. Of, there's a butt coming. There's a butt coming. I knew where the butt was. The butt was 
the fact that this person is in their late forties and I had the, I put their very first internship on that resume. Now that first internship from what decades ago? Yeah. Wasn't anywhere on the prior materials, but Oh, I was listening. I was listening. <laughs> I'm a sponge and Oh, internship. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was listening. Yeah wasn't really the internship that really got them. I mean, I had the goal to put detail, this, that, the other thing, airport pickups. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do we need that? Do we need that? So I reminded them I work without a filter, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me I'm ready. I'm ready. But I'm like, I said, okay, you're just not thinking. Let me connect the dots for you. You came out of a top journalism school in the country. <laughs> First thing you land is what? ABC television, World News Tonight. I don't understand why, why, why that would ever come off the resume. The second piece, the second piece, uh, uh, this, that, the other thing, airport pickups. Who, who, who are you picking up at the airport? People that are on television. You know, people that are on television need a lot of handling. And your kid just out of school, you have the finesse, the nuance, everything else to, to handle these people that need a lot of handling speaks to exactly why he'd rise to be chief communication officer. I love it. I love it. Don't touch it. From turd, turd, turd on my resume to nugget of gold. Don't touch that, baby. So that's what you're going to have to do is deal with those challenges. First, you have to recapture all of the story that you may have lost. Then maybe, I think I have a support slide or two coming up here, what you're probably going to end up with is eight or nine pages of notes. That's about what I end up with when I go through a deep dive interview. Besides all the materials, eight or nine pages of my own notes, well, that's not going to fit on a single sheet of paper. Why don't you grab a highlighter? Grab that highlighter and be very stingy. Stingy, stingy with the highlighter. I'm going to highlight things, but only when they're resume worthy. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This one, this one. So if I went down those pages and highlighted the, the ruby, diamond, emerald, negative gold dropper perfume with the highlight. Now you have a core idea of what make the, makes the cut for the resume. Pull all the information backwards plus the required information, like what was their name? What was the title, the dates, the basic structure? And then now you have just a little tiny bit of the best content on there. All the rest of the content, you're going to have to filter it through that self-recruiter lens of does it rise to the right level? When you're thinking about it, it's not about trying to get credit for everything. No, but I did this. I did that. I, I, I get you did that, but you don't need the credit for this. This is what they're going to want to buy. Don't, don't distract them with the story that your ego needs attention on, but this is what they'd like to buy over here. So, in general, yes, be capable and qualified, but it's really about uh, the confidence also to share a little bit about why are you interesting? What makes you tick? Uh, that could have something to do with your work life. It could have nothing to do with your work life. Example, um, oh gosh, I think it was about four Octobers ago, getting toward the end of the month, just about like now, suddenly the person uh, I'm working with says, uh, oh, I'm about to be a four-time marathon runner next week. <laughs> I'm like, well, well what? This is the first time John's hearing about it. You're about to be a four-time marathon runner. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with my work. I'm like, it doesn't? Gosh, you seem like you're getting a little mature. Now, what does a four-time marathon runner communicate? Energy, drive, ambition, unstoppable goal. Probably really good on my healthcare costs. Believe me, behind the scenes, I've heard them talk about it all. So you have to sell the whole story of who you are. Think about that. Even uh, some of those good works, good works don't expire by the way think of all the things that go into branding you or creating this image of you or how you'd like people to think of you really filter it through a singular question what items rise to the level to convince them it'd be a best business decision they'd make that day if they chose you those items are the ones for the resume now let's let's get into some resume formats here i got i got presented this like i've been told all i can expect is more of this it's like a brick in the head and, and I'm standing there and I'm me <laughs> after 90 minutes of lecture and, and, you know, I like coffee and, and adrenaline going in front of a live audience. And, and suddenly I'm, I'm like, well, what would you like to do? Cause I'm like, I'm thinking I'm sleepy now. I'm like, this resume is going to put me out. <laughs> I'm like, what would you like to do? I'll ask a question. I'd like to be in events. I'm like, oh, great energy. Have you ever been in events? Ouch. <laughs> I am me. And it's right here. If I'm me, with my background and I cannot see it, how do you think anybody else can see it? All they can see is, oh, law firm. And you know what was below this one? Oh, another impressive law firm with more endless text of block in the head. And you know what? Oh, I, you know what I see in your future? More law firm, more law firm for you. 
This is the same background. Completely different storytelling method. You realize, of course, there's no sentence structure whatsoever here. I would even argue that the law firms are even more impressive this way because they can actually be seen beyond just being ankle weights that will drag it to the bottom of the river type thing. And now you can see everything this individual did with events. By the way, they had a whole other half of their job that was all administrative nonsense they never wanted to do again. And it's not here because there's no sin of omission. We put what, what we worked on here, the things we'd like to do again. I don't need the credit for that other stuff that I really don't ever want to do again. So, uh, yeah, when I uncovered the story, it's pretty dazzling. I mean, events at the Heller Gallery, at, 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 the, at the Met, at, at New York Public Library, at, at Morgan Library Museum, and on and on and on, Guggenheim. Uh, um, but you know what? You have to think about where you're going to go through this transformation for yourself. How are you going to transform that blocky old way of your storytelling to something new? Well, we're going to have to go through this because we're a product. And, and just like a product has to be reinvented or repackaged to create engagement, you're going to have to do it. But it's a lot closer to this style of engagement than the mechanical style. Um, just keep in mind, every small change you make changes perception in some way. Now, back to personal branding, because that's a huge piece of it. All of those things you saw earlier that affect how people think of us. Um, I'm going to show you a few resumes I just pulled off the internet before I show you specifically what I think you should do. It's almost a little easier for you to learn it once I tell you what's wrong with these from my view. And then, of course, you, you I'll show you what I think you should do. Now, I'm going to go a little bit smaller here so these can be a little bit larger. Oh, there we go. But I'm going to stay with you. So uh, Julia here. <clears throat> and and, and uh, let me just. I want to just check one piece here because we did miss the first resume and I don't want you to miss it. Now, let me just reshare. Hold on one second because I should hate you to miss that. And window and window and share. And there it is. Finally. Okay back okay so kelly here kudos to kelly first off on his or her brand big bold can't miss it. of course it was a big last name there i took that off you didn't need to see that um and that's the last positive thing i have to say about this resume this resume suffers from what most resumes suffer from and that's a really almost complete failure to think about information architecture i know that may be a strange like what what information Think of any, any reasonable size building. It doesn't have to be a giant skyscraper, just any reasonable size building. You just can't put that thing up. Somebody has to decide literally everything. How does the plumbing work? How does the electric work? How does all the support and, and, and system of the building work? Um, how does the energy needs of the building work? All that has to be pre-planned, architected out. Well, it's very, very similar with information. What if they were only going to read 30% of this? No, no, 20%, you, no, only 15% of your information. Which 15, 30, 20% would you like them to read? That's your job to determine based on how you put this together. So really, I get here, and, and even though I complimented Kelly on, on, on the name, you know what? I think Shades of Yellow was not a really great choice. First off, it's hard to look at on screen. When I print it out, it's Shades of Grey. It's, it's not as impressive. Um, but when we get into the bulk of the resume, I don't know whether I'm supposed to start on the left here and then read to the right or go up and down. How am I supposed to work? And I have mere seconds. So so this this does not convey the background within seconds. Julia here, as we almost started with a few moments ago. Now, by the way, I did not write these comments on the bottom. It says, who, who said the name had to be at the top anyway? I'll say it. <laughs> that the name has to be at the top. You know, subtitle of my book is Changing the Rules. I'm a big, big fan of changing literally almost any rule that does not work for you. But there are certain rules you can't change. This is one of them. Why? Because what does the end target audience expect? Name at the top. What do we expect on the left? Employer title, employer title, employer title. What do we expect after that? Education. It's a reverse half moon in an eye pattern we're expecting. And Julia throws a, a rock or a jolt or a log into that. And you may go, oh, great attention getting. It is, absolutely. But 
now create now Julia has created an information architecture problem. I don't understand whether I'm supposed to read the bottom of the page first and then go to the top or go to the top and read down. And there's some other problems here. Actually, the only things I can really see are the reasons I would never hire Julia. And those are the dates. Dates are never a reason I hire you. Dates are a reason I do not hire you. So while dates are expected, if you understand dates only affect you negatively, why would you put them over near their eyes? Put them as far away from their eyes as possible. Certainly not in bold, maybe a smaller font, all that kind of things. Also, I cannot see Julia's employers. Now you may go, well, well John, they seem to be blurred out. Yes, I get that piece. I, I, I know the employers are here, but intellectually, I'd have to go on a hunting expedition to go find them. Serve the employer title up on a silver platter. It's exactly what they're looking for. It determines your value. By the way, the employers, like it or not, the employers determine almost every ounce of your value. So we need to see those brands because if they're brands we haven't heard of, your value drops quite a bit. That's also advice for the future that you, if you, unless you have to, unless you have to, because some of us, we got to keep the cash flow going. But uh, if you have choice, the goal is always to move only to a brand that the person right next to you, random person right next to you has certainly heard of. That's how you increase your own brand value throughout your career. Let's take a look at this next one here. Martin here. Kudos to Martin on his brand. I've seen this format many times over the years, so it's not really Martin doing it, but you get the idea. Um, I'm not sure it makes sense on a single sheet of resume to spend 25% of the real estate telling me your name. And yes, I pulled off the excess, excess information you didn't really need there. Um, also, information architecture problem with these two columns. I'm not quite sure whether I'm supposed to start down the blue column and then go to the next column or, or read across. How is that supposed to work? And all I can really see is education, internship, and personal skills. And, and those are labels. Silly labels are really pulling all the focus. The, the story is not really pulling the focus. So now that you've seen some of the traps, I want you to think about the seconds you have for clarity. So yes, we have to be capable and qualified, but it's also or even more important about how we're interesting or what makes us tick. And hopefully somehow we can connect that to our work life. Remember that um, if I hire you, I'm going to spend my waking life with you, or, or at least post-pandemic someday, I'm going to spend my waking life with you. And, and, and that means really more time with you than my loved ones. That's why we want to like you. So the number one reason, if you're capable and qualified, the number one reason you were hired is chemistry. How are you interesting? What makes you tick? Is chemistry. Number two reason you're hired is confidence in you which may come out of how you are interesting if you're a marathon runner or, or what makes you tick or what drives you. But it all has to be integrated into a three-dimensional real person that's capable and qualified. Think about your storytelling as you go to tell your story. Now let's get into the resume itself and give you details. Resume to me is about catching or piquing that interest, making them aware of you. LinkedIn is about closing the deal with you being seen as the very, very best individual. This is about influencing how they think about you so that your interview conversation and every conversation gets easier and easier. Or you can go back to one of these brick in the head type resumes that don't really work and just go <sighs> more law firm for you. Cause I can't really tell who you are. There's no clarity. So we have to have, have clarity and we have to have influence at the same time. We're going to clarify our career path, clarify all the reasons why we're, we're dazzling in our story. But also we want to influence how they see our value. So go back to this one and think about how it's transformed in its storytelling within seconds. Anybody that was looking for someone in events would see exactly why this is the person I have to handle or have to have on my team. I have to engage with, which is, of course, closer to that type of engagement. So five key areas to create a winning resume. We're going to come back to each one of these and give you detail. You are the product too. Resume, the new definition, or your resume's goals, understanding stacks of resumes, and the three-second test for resumes. Now, said so we're going to come right back. Let's go back to the beginning. You are product two. When a company chooses to hire you, they're buying a product, or, or at least they're buying your time and talents. We get that part. We may not like that whole concept, but once you embrace it and, and 
detach emotionally from it, then gosh, let's make this the best, most exciting uh, uh, product ever. I think I can come a little larger now that we have that. Resume, the new definition. I hope you have a lot of, a lot of ink ready. We're going to have to uh, do a lot of writing here. Ready for it? Ready for it? A simple sales sheet that creates desire. Simple sales sheet that creates desire. The job of the resume is to spark the interest, not to tell the whole story. Just enough that they, I, I have to hear more. To create the desire for you. The goals for your resume. Well, what are those goals? Well, it's mission in life is to deliver the interview. If it's delivering the interviews that you'd like, likely don't need to change it. If it's not delivering the interviews that you want to get, there's something wrong with the resume. So to deliver those interviews, it needs a clear, clean, straightforward format. This is a format where the information itself like jumps off the page for the reader with no effort. All the accomplishments, they just specific ones, very absorbable, they're right there. Think about that word, everything formatted to be absorbed quickly. Of course, we have to clearly inform by educational background. That's part of it as well. They don't want to. They don't want to read, but they can still absorb story if we handle the delivery of information correctly. And I'm saying stacks of resumes. Well, might be somebody in here. This is that thousand, two thousand stack. Oh, might be somebody in here. That's stack number one. Oh, oh maybe, 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 maybe. I'm gonna have to come back. Stack number two. But they don't come back. Why would I come back to this stack to these folks that? Somehow couldn't convey the value to me. I'll, I'll take another look. Take a deeper look in a minute. I have this whole incoming river of new resumes. Why would I come back to these people? So stack two becomes a dead end stack. And stack three is the dead end. Thanks, but no thanks. What, now, why did they send it in for this job? Dead end. So we have to get ourselves into stack number one. Now, the secret you may not like to this whole evaluation process is it is incredibly short. It is literally three to five seconds. Will not go longer than five seconds. You're going to be in one of those three stacks. Your job, your goal. You must get that resume into stack number one. One page. Almost by default, anything longer than a single page goes into stack two. Oh, I have to come back. I have to come back. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Distill your story down to its essence, single page. Make them jump out of the chair. Now, when I happened to mention, it was a LinkedIn lecture I was giving over at uh, New York State Department of Labor. And I happened to mention a single page resume because, you know, these are two marketing documents that are related. They often come up. And somebody in the back was flipping out like, oh, my gosh, what, what, what if you've been a CEO and you got a 30 year career? It's never going to fit. OK, take a breath a moment. Um, I don't think that's reaction is because you don't like John's answer. I think that reaction is because you find yourself sitting in the Department of Labor going, well, how can they not see my value? How, how come I'm here? Not a surprise. This person hired me to reinvent their background and they send me their stuff. And it is six pages of my eyes bleeding. Oh, yeah. Very impressive background. See. EO and COO before that and CFO before that and 30 years of endless career they just could not stop talking about. It's an editing problem. You know, with that type of a background, once it's edited down to the literal skeletal system, it's dazzling. You won't get that on a single sheet of paper. Boom. Of course, you're a CEO again. I know a lot of people in certain fields think they need that. Oh, I, I need a CV. Well, for your own whatever yes gratitudes but 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 if you'd like to be hired you need a single sheet resume that's going to sell you no time i'll tell a client it's really okay to have a two-page that's a confidence issue um what are we looking at on this single page resume name which is the brand current or last three employers and titles and your educational background now here's where i test the hearing because in in-person lectures i've certainly heard people afterward go oh john said just put the last three employers and titles i'm like well, well what when did John say that? He did not. I said, what we're looking at are the current or last three employers and titles. If you ask me a different question, oh, what would you like on a resume? I am so glad you asked. <clears throat> I would like a resume to be complete from the time you entered the workforce to today. Now, I did not say that would be the right solution for you. I said, that's what I would like to see. Yes, I'd like to see the whole journey. Um, but we're looking at the current or last three employers and titles for time relevance of your skills, how sharp you are up to date. What's the most recent things that you've changed or, or saved or, or, or contributed at your company. Three second resume test. Well, <clears throat> if you have your resume, go ahead and pull it out. Don't look at it yet. When I tell you to look at it, you're going to have to look at it with fresh eyes. So I mean, I don't know this person, which is me. And in the time I'll tell you, I'll say start, I'll say stop. In the time I give you, 
without knowing yourself. You just look at the paper and then you tell yourself what you were able to tell yourself about this person who is you in that time. Go ahead and take a look. And stop. And for those that didn't do it, uh, they were watching. Oh, you got the full benefit of 1001 all the way to 1005. It will never go longer than that. And your resume is in one of those three stacks. <clears throat> and when I do that for an in-person audience, most people look up and go, deer in the headlights. <laughs> I can't tell you anything about this person. And it's me. And that's a real problem. So in three seconds, we want them to be able to begin to deeply visualize your career, your contributions, your journey, and become captivated by it. That's the whole process of building a better resume. Now, I object to objectives all of the time. You know, objective statements, all that stuff that collects at the top of the resume, core competencies, highlights of my career, everything I've ever achieved since kindergarten. <sighs> Each time another layer of that gets added, it's because of a lack of confidence as we go up the food chain. All of that is not necessary. In fact, behind the scenes, when we see all that, we shield our eyes. We look at your name, shield our eyes, go down to employer title, employer title, employer title, education, decision. So let's take, in my view, let's take all that nonsense off the top of the resume and repurpose that space in a much more effective way with something I call a positioning title. In a simplest iteration simplest world maybe four or five six words that somehow say exactly who you are as a work product as an individual this should always represent the job you're going after whether you've ever held that job before or not you're presenting yourself as qualified it's very clear when they look down the resume if you've not held that title before there's no misrepresentation here uh in a more complex background and i'm going to show you samples it could be two three lines of four five six words all handled a little differently so that when they look at your name and they cross it to look at employer title, they can't not imprint it. And they begin to think of you that way before they look at your contributions. So you know how I think of these objective statements. So back to a traditional one here. I have a little pop-up in my way. Let's get it out of my view. Um, brick in the head. All I can really see is the word profile and professional experience. That doesn't really help me. What do I get? High energy, detail. <sighs> Before I nod off, this is the same resume, by the way. High energy events planner, specialist. Okay, now I get what the heck they are. Um, or different ones, different people. Could be campaign director, me and PR, uh, uh, community liaison. Um, or this one, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a detailed version of this one a little bit later. Accomplished sales professional. Experienced extensive contracts across industries. Oh, software hardware services. Just what I'm looking for. Just what I'm looking for. Great story behind that one coming up. Back to this brick in the head. So when you look at your resume, you're going to have to look at what words you're using that work against you. Duties, coordinating, facilitating, maintaining. Ugh. So administrative in the way it's phrased. We have to think about how we contribute. It doesn't sound like we're a servant. You're a valued contributor. Um, so it also has to be consistency. Some of the, some of the dates have dashes. Some of the dates have the word to. All that will work against you if you if you don't really simplify it. Your goal here is to make it so simple and elegant, in a sense, that it just flows into the brain. And whatever appeals to them, things become grouped, absorbable. They get the story. Now, most of that detail is here, but I can't get it. I can't get it. I can't get it. Not getting, oh, no, I get it. I get it. It's right there. I love it. Oh, I can't, can't get it. Why this person's interesting. Oh, it's, Business development, administrative assistant. Oh, that's the thing I see. Oh, this person looks interesting. Take control of your story. Add clarity. Add focus. Go through the process. Do what's necessary. I'm going to give you sizing and everything else that really helps this process. But small changes change perception. Now, this person also was getting mature in their career, so they were so worried they started cutting things. So before I worked with them, they'd cut off Martha Stewart living off the resume. You want to work in events, you've worked for Martha Stewart Living and you cut that off the resume or House Beautiful Magazine where you did event related things, uh, event at the Guggenheim and, and European Travel uh, Life and Magazine where you did event related things and photo shoots. So I get that we may want to cut some things, but my gosh, let's not cut off value. They're still going to have to either see you when you walk through the door or see you on a Zoom. Um, so 
I mean, we're still going to have to be in the similar generation we are. So let's not be too, too much there. Now, here's a really interesting one. This is, um, this is a guy down in the Carolinas sent me his, his, his stuff a few years back. And, you know, at the time that I worked with him, uh, 10, 11 years, I think he had in the uh, furniture, contract furniture sales arena. Um, but so done with it. So done with it. Every time he sent out his resume, they go, but, 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 we don't need a furniture salesperson. I'm like, why are you talking about furniture? What, what do you want to do? I want to be software, hardware services. I'm like, oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, have you ever done it? Ouch, because that was nowhere to be seen, right? Uh, yes, 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 yes. You know when? About 15 years ago. So <clears throat> that may be someone on today's live streamcast issue. Maybe you have to sell 15-year-old experience. And you have to think about that. So what we did now, since 10, 11 years in one job, really, his old resume was all that job with where's the prior stuff. So what we did was we distilled down the last 10, 11 years to this super paragraph of accomplishments as a sales individual. And then I removed the furniture, 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 furniture. Now, Price Modern, you may have known them as a brand. I did not. Hayworth certainly did know. Uh, and other than corporate office furnishings, the words do not appear anywhere. What do we see? Uh, uh, account executive achieved $50 million cumulative sales to date, ranked top 10 in revenues every year since 2002, built a strong pipeline. This is every single thing that would make a sales manager jump out of the chair which then allowed space in the resume to expand much earlier to show software, hardware services. And then we simply changed the top of the resume to close that gap in people's minds so we could start the conversation and back into software, hardware services. Now, this is a bottom of a resume. I want to teach you what to really do to be efficient and effective on a single page. If you do have to truncate your background, this is a great example of a truncated background, the cut background just a little bit. And in this person's case, we said, well, where do we want to really start or stop the story going backwards? And we decided to start the story with electronic data systems back in 1999. And uh, the reason is, is EDS, if you're not familiar with them, oh, they're one of those employers. Now, every industry has one of those employers. If they hire you, oh my, they hired you. you know, financial services, do you know who that is? Goldman Sachs type of thing. So, so uh, great to start the story. It's like, oh my gosh, one of those hired you. But now we have three prior employers before this. And, and two of these three prior employers also rise to that same stunning level. Kaiser Permanente and, and PwC PricewaterhouseCoopers also have that same reputation. So within one glance, we have three crown jewels <laughs> hired you. you. You must be amazing. Well, a couple things here. Uh, these three prior employers add 17 additional years of background to this individual. Who needs to be 17 years older next time they walk through that door or into the Zoom conference? Not, not too many of us, a few of us, not too many of us. <laughs> um, I want to point out that I'm going to give you all the sizes coming up, but I want to point out a little sizing here because we live in a world where we think, oh yeah, make everything big, make it big. I want, to, I want them to see it bigger, bigger. If everything's big, nothing can be seen. It's a hierarchy. So lots of sizing coming up. The sizing is not written down anywhere. You need to write it down or work directly with me either way. Uh, but I do want to point out this, that EDS is 10 point bold. Um, Sheila Packard, it's probably down one to, to nine point. Uh, location, uh, not small enough. This is a very old resume. I've gotten even smaller. Prior employment though, I do want to point out that that is three quarters of one inch on the sheet of paper. This is a dazzle cell piece. It does not need to scream. This is like going to an expensive restaurant and ordering that dessert that comes out on the giant plate and there's a little tiny whatever in the middle and there's like the drizzle all over the plate. There's a little sparkle across the plate. There's a little extra dash of something and then a cherry on top for $17.95. There it is. Um, this is like that. Just a little tiny bit of the drizzle, dazzle, whatever. They're like, get them in here. Get them on the phone. So this is a confidence issue. Look at, we didn't even say what they contributed. It didn't matter. The brands carry it. Wow. Three of those. Now let's look below that and communicate a few other things here. If I take the dates off of some of my employment, because I need to, like, I don't want them to calculate any farther. Uh, that means I also have to take the dates off education. Notice the bottom of the resume splits two parts. I'm a big fan of splitting the bottom of the resume. Only way you can really be effective in a two, in a single page resume. So three universities here, but, but 
gosh, how come, how come two are treated differently than the other? Now, if this were your field, that, that University of Maryland PMP, you're probably jumping out of your chair going, PMP, PMP, oh my gosh, tattoo it on my forehead, put it at the top of my resume. I get it. I know the PMP is the cell piece. Um, you also have to understand it belongs where it belongs. Excuse this word, but that, that PMP is a certificate which does not trump these two degrees. <laughs> so yes, the masters must lead followed by the bachelors. That is a hierarchy. And from that, we then downsize in, 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 this is like taking a flashlight in a dark room to control where people look and how they absorb information. And of notice, I want you to notice community involvement. Is that really appropriate? Is that, should I have that on there? It's like, you know, you need, you need credit for contributing. By the way, good works don't expire. So if you have, have done something for Habitat for Humanity and it's not on your resume, shame on you. Uh, but but think about how you get the 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 character things like my gosh you're so busy with your whole career and you contribute back to society yeah let's talk to them so think about those few things for the bottom of your resume and how you might transform your resume so let's get down to some sizing and everything we talked all about the story and we're talking a little bit about the format but now let me give you some sizes here so on Betty Joe um, everything on this page you just highlight everything on the page you make it ten point also have to pick a font. Now I would, I would recommend just using Arial, but use Arial, Verdana, or Helvetica, partly because they're on every machine known to man, no matter who makes it. Um, the other thing is to sit and think about how you uh, take this and let's, you know, uh, uh, sorry, I had a little distracting message coming through, <laughs> which is making me smile. Um, how you take this and now control perception. So if everything's 10 point bold, I'm going to violate those rules, changing the rules, just like my book, violate the rules right away by going up to the name and making it 18 point bold. No time for shyness, big, bold product name right up there. Upper lowercase. So I'm approachable and friendly. Uh, everything else started at 10 point bold. So I'm going to adjust or 10 point regular. So I'm going to adjust from there. And of course you even see with, in this case, this person, is a campaign director that's the job they're going after but they also have media and pr in the background and community liaison pieces all things that would help them as a campaign director so those call outs that would get them noticed are all right up there these are also things this individual has performed notice that we're serving up almost on a silver platter the employer title employer title employer title partly indenting partly spacing so let's start with good samaritan village salvation army United Way. Those are all the employer brands. They're 10 point bold. Notice that the comma location and date are not only not bold, they're certainly not 10 point. In this iteration, there's seven point, seven point, because I want them to disappear into the background. I want to provide the information, but we don't want to, you know, hit them over the head with it. That's not important. Don't look here. Look at Good Samaritan Village, which is the brand. Um, I like two points of space after the brand before the title. Now, I know there's a special line on Good Samaritan Village. Let's come back. Look at Salvation Army, employer title. So Salvation Army line, you just scroll over that, highlight it, and you add space. More visuals coming up to tell you about adding space. So we'll put two points of space after the brand, before the title. And then the public relations line, I like that whole line. That's the title line. A half a point less than the brand. So that title, public relations resource development, that is 9.5 in size, but not bold because then it would fight with the brand, but italicized. So they both draw attention, but they don't fight with each other. They work in harmony. Now I'd like four points of space before the bullet points. And you simply highlight the, the, the title. I have screens coming up to show you. We'll add four points of space before those individual little bullets. Now the individual bullets, I can scroll over the each bullet set one at a time. And those I can make 8.5 in size. And they're going to get a little tight, a little hard to read. While it's highlighted, I'm going to solve it by adding space between each bullet. Screen's coming up to show you how to do that, coming right up. And the space I'm going to add between each bullet is 1.75 points of space. I have a full pre pressed background early in my career, so I really do understand that line type and spacing. You magically input this, and suddenly it becomes breathable, readable again. So, so think about all that. 
couple of little extras, professional experience, same thing with education. Those are seven point bold, all caps. But you know, when it's black, it's still pulling too much information. So we highlight it and we turn it to just a little bit of gray. And then you put eight points of space after those section heads, essentially, whether it be professional experience or education. By the way, any other ones you use, skills, additional background, whatever else you'd like to say, community, as I hit my camera, um, those things I just downsize one to yes, six point, because it's all cap, it'll still be readable, make it gray the same way, adjust the spacing so it looks good. Um, think about all those things and how this little bit of work is how you just make things readable, absorbable. You can have a lot of variety here. You just have to make a rule list. Every single title is handled this way. Every single location date handled this way. Every single employer handled this way. Every bullet handled this way. As long as there's consistency, you'll get to the end and people just go, it just works somehow. Yes, it does. Now, <clears throat> single line contact information. You didn't see that on, on Betty Joe's there, but top of the resume is not where we need to eat up space like a layered cake. So all your contact information, LinkedIn, everything else, all in a single line. I prefer LinkedIn URL first, followed by your city state, followed by your email, followed by your cell phone number. No, I don't care that you can't get your cell phone number in your own house. The cell phone number is what goes there, not your home phone number. Now you make that whole line seven point. Yep, seven point. It's going to go like this and be completely unreadable. And when it's highlighted, we're going to change the character spacing still going to show you how to do that coming up and we're just going to expand it by one two three points until it moves across the page and even at seven point it'll be perfectly readable once it expands think about that now how do we add space there's two types of space that's between the lines and between the characters sort of between the lines that's after titles after brands you know before bullets all that kind of stuff you highlight whatever you'd like Go up to format, down to paragraph. Now, here's where I have to insert a little apology on behalf of Microsoft. They have so many versions of Microsoft Word out there. Yours probably looks completely different than this. So learn the concept and maybe go and find the solution on your version. But I know your version has the solution. You just have to go through some of the windows to find it. So go down to paragraph. This box pops up. And part of the box is points after. I simply put in the two or the four or the... 1.75 or or the eight points after the 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 head, headline spacers of or the section header type things and magically that little bit of extra space just pops in there extra secret by the way after your name before the contact line add two points of space it's going to really help it breathe even though the seven points spread out just help the whole thing breathe now that contact line that has to be spread out this way and this technique can also help you just a little bit with your bullets that become a hair too long or those kind of things. Don't over adjust. I go up to format down to font this time. Font window comes up. I simply click the advanced where I can either expand or contract the character spacing. Most of the time, it's by very little increments. If it is that whole contact line, it's by one, two or three full points versus like a tenth of a point type thing. Three, four, five, six iterations maybe to get to the right resume. Each one is, is going to do a really great job. Each time you get to the next iteration, you're going to put it next to the original. What works, what doesn't work, what's better, what else can I do? Three-second test, back to the drawing board. Refine it, refine it, refine it until the conversation you have at the, at the next meeting Get so much easier because they've already bought into all of the credibility that you no longer have to build in conversation. Now, work pedigree, and I'm thinking dogs, horses, that kind of thing. Okay, we have the right word. You may be getting a little bit of the three to five second look at the resume, but I don't think you're quite grasping it. We're looking at the quality of the company's titles and accomplishments, even though I said we wouldn't really look at those accomplishments and the educational background. And here's the proof. World's simplest resume. Doesn't really get simpler than this. Nestle, USA, director of quality assurance, uh, Kraft Foods, quality assurance manager, Coca-Cola company, quality assurance engineer, University of Florida, BS Agriculture. I guarantee you this is the world's simplest resume if this is all that's on it. And yet, we all have some sort of view over, over Todd's background here. Well, what can I get here? I see, well, I, I see career progression. I see engineer to manager to director. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, he's got the degree, University of Florida. 
BS and agriculture. Oh, these are great companies, of course. Right? Right? How do you know? <laughs> you know, when I talk to in-person audiences, I'll go, who's worked for a great company? Maybe 60 or 80 people in the audience and like four people's hands go up sheepishly. <laughs> I'm like, really? How about the rest of us? You know, we all think like ours is the stinker. Well, I hate, I hate to tell you, after working with so many people over so many years, almost every company is, is messed up beyond belief inside, stuck in an internal reorg system of, of grinding up their employees and spitting them out in parts. Uh, I never worked food and beverage. I can't tell you if these are any good. Are they probably just as messed up as the rest? Probably. Couldn't tell you. Um, but they still have a tremendous effect. And this is the effect of brands. So let's promote yourself up to the manager that has to hire whatever spot we're considering for Todd. And, and you only have one interview spot left, but you have two candidates. You have Todd here, Todd here, who we see, and somebody else, somebody else who also ha has been director, manager, engineer, same same University of Florida's BS Agriculture, actually. Maybe they even know each other. I don't, I don't really know. Um, um, but that person did it for three food and beverage companies we've never heard of. Let's see, Todd or the other one, Todd or the other there is no decision process here. Todd will get that interview every single time over the other person. That is the power of those brands. So good, bad, or ugly experience, my recommendation to you is to move from one incredibly well-known brand to the next incredibly well-known brand to the next well-known brand. That is how you increase your own brand value along the way, um, even when the journey itself wasn't so satisfying. But remember, you're still learning either what to do or what not to do. So think about the power. Now, value, value everywhere, but nowhere to be seen. You saw a resume with nothing on it and felt the value. It all comes down to what you put under those employers and titles you saw. Your achievements, you got to be bullet pointed, have to be absorbable, have to be tangible, have to have deliverable items in it. Yeah. So focus the story. You know where to focus the story. Did I increase the revenues? Or, or hopefully it affected the expenses. Somehow it's always about performance. So, you know, if you can't necessarily get all these percentages, dollar signs, those kind of things in there, you may have to move to visual language, like redeveloped office workflow. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Um, so they can visualize things. Just a, a moment or two on degrees of degrees. Have you received in hand your college degree? Strange way to ask it, I know. Um, I learned to ask it that way as a recruiter because I found out people were lying to me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you really? You're going to lie to me? Um, all that really matters is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If you did not receive your college degree because you you, you didn't pay that $168, that's no degree. Or you're three credits shy, that's no degree. But you still need to put the university, the coursework toward, not a BS and whatever, too close to the baloney, but coursework toward the field of study and get the full credit that you deserve, that you've earned, and let go of that piece Um after a while, and once you're into your career, that's not what you're selling. Uh, what you're selling is how you contributed to these organizations, what you've learned along the way. They keep bringing up what you didn't quite finish long ago, basically to keep your salary expectations lower. So don't let that hold you back. A last word on designing your resume. You know, it's about moving your brand forward. That means helping them visualize your career, helping them see the magic you conveyed onto companies and all those achievements. And of course, educating them about your, your educational background as well. A last word about Word, no special love for Microsoft. I would like them if they wrote great stuff, but they Word is example of the worst, worst, worst program on the planet. So if you dared put all this work into your resume and then sent it to some opportunity as a Word version, you have no idea what it actually looks like on the other end. Could look very similar, could look like a completely different animal. I experienced it myself while filming a reality TV pilot episode. And, and producers had sent me the, the person's resume that I quickly redid. And, and, and they saw the original resume and thought that was the new resume. I'm like, what do you mean? This is the one you sent me. <laughs> it's like, looks completely different. I'm like, because you sent a word version. Over on my YouTube channel, there's a headless horseman video, which will walk you right through it. Convert it over to a PDF after all this work. So it stays perfect, no matter who prints it, no matter who looks at it, no matter what software handles it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Wherever you are in the process of reinventing your resume, take the first step and repeat. Move it forward. Let's get everything uh, happening for you. Hopefully, you can join in for the rest of the series this week. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about LinkedIn at 11 a.m. 
Thursday, we'll be talking about part two to the LinkedIn, which is career evolution. How do I now take my LinkedIn profile and run a social media campaign to draw attention and employers and offers my way? Friday, when I do get that interview, how do I, well, someone has to have an intervention before my next interview to stop me from failing to understand. It's an opportunity to, to sell. It's a sales meeting. You should control it without being controlling. And then we're going to cap the week off on Monday, Halloween, with a very special live Ask Self Recruiter live Q&A. So do send in your questions to ask at selfrecruiter.com. That's ask at selfrecruiter.com. And if you need help on your career branding, if you need help elevating and fixing the resume or LinkedIn profile, check out all my services over on the Self Recruiter website under my services tab. And if you need to talk before you know which package is right for you, send me a quick email and we'll set up a time to talk. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow. Please don't forget, whether you're watching this on LinkedIn Live or YouTube channel or over on Facebook, please don't forget to like, comment, share, message, and do all those things that we know help. Thanks so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.